Howdy folks, so Futurama does a pretty good job of presenting the ideas of science, maybe not accurately, but at least they pay it some due. And one of the most iconic pieces where the creators seem to grab us and say, this is how you know it's the future, is the tube transport system. And for sure, I, that would be a sweet mode of transportation, but would I really have to cryogenically freeze myself into the year 3000, or is it something more around the corner, at least from an engineering perspective? Interesting. No, wait, the other thing. Tedious. Operating a bit like a single-person subway, the tube is a mass transit system to shuttle new New Yorkers about via plastic tubes in the sky rather than electric railroads underground. Though I wonder if you would even call it a mass transit system that the passengers are traveling individually as opposed to in train cars that have many people moving along them in mass. So it's kind of like a personal freeway, although it is the system that is moving the people. But anyways, in Futurama, when Fry or anyone else takes the tube, they enter in, often through open doorways, and are sucked or pushed along by air pressure differential, and are rocketed along the length of the tube until they reach a destination, sometimes smoothly, and sometimes not. So how do these things work? Well, a little irony of the system is that, despite all of the glamour of a futuristic tube network, they're basically just fancy pneumatic tubes which were originally developed in the 1800s and have been falling out of fashion for the past 100 years or so. I mean, the last time I remember seeing a pneumatic tube was after getting cash from a drive through ATM and looking over at the empty lanes at the bank where I guess my ancestors traded checks for money or something. But if the engineering principle is based in something real, then it seems plausible that we could build these tubes, why not? Many people have tried something similar, from Alfred Ellie Beach in 1860s New York to Elon Musk in the 21st century, <laughs> assuming that the Hyperloop wasn't just a ploy to put pressure on other mass transit projects in California to the benefit of his car co <clears throat> Sorry, taking the tinfoil hat off now. Alright, so I'm getting distracted. Brief history of the pneumatic tube transportation. One minute, let's go. So some English guy developed the idea all the way back in the early 1800s, and when implemented were mostly used to transport mail. It was a local communications thing. Now, London had a broad system by 1870, so did Paris, Berlin, even Chicago. It beats a horse-drawn buggy, I suppose. And many individual buildings or campuses had them too, even NASA as late as 1970. And there were a few short-lived attempts at turning the idea into a transit system, both in London with the LDPR in 1865 and in New York with the Alfred Ellie Beach Project in 1867, but neither was really able to stay open for more than a few years, and the LDPR wasn't really intended for transit, mostly just big bags of mail. And just like the air leaking out of those pneumatic tubes, the desire for these systems fell appreciably with the arrival of electronic telegrams, automated bankings, or anything else modern, though pneumatic tubes are still used in some hospitals to transfer samples to a lab for testing, and also in some novelty respects like this cafe. And up until uh, 2011, this McDonald's in Minnesota would send you burgers this way, uh, but otherwise apparently not too useful. So why does it suck? I, I mean, how does it work, uh, mechanically? Uh, well, you have an object at one end of an open tube, and using a fan of sorts to pull air out of the other end of the tube, it causes an area of low pressure, the pressure differential on either side of the object, and pulling it towards the other end. The object being sent is usually in a capsule with a diameter just a bit smaller than the tube that it's in, which helps convert the pressure differential into a force on the object. And it can work the same way in reverse, with a fan pushing air to create a high pressure zone behind the object. You see it, magic. Got it. But the concept has been described in a lot of science fiction throughout the years. Ray Bradbury, for example, explored the idea in Fahrenheit 451 and the Jetsons. They too gave it a whirl. Looking to the year 3000, does this concept still make sense for the tube? From a force perspective, there's no reason that a person couldn't be picked up if examples from over a hundred years ago sent heavy bags of mail across the city. Uh, easy maths would show that just a 10% differential from standard air pressure on either side of a person should be enough to get them going. But the main innovation that Futurama brings is the lack of a capsule. Now, so what does that do? What, well, it makes getting in and out easier. Uh, you don't end up with a big stack of capsules at one end like trays at an airport, but I wonder about how the air moves around 
around people since there isn't this tube-sized capsule blocking airflow and helping to create that pressure differential needed to move the passengers. That's not to say it couldn't work, it'd certainly be less efficient though, and probably come with a host of quirks. Like, this is one of the only transportation networks whose function is dependent on the size and maybe even the dress of the users. Uh, makes you think they would want a TSA there. Okay, but the capsule might be doing more than helping efficiency. Uh, think about what happens at a curve. It's not like there's a steering involved, so I imagine there would be a slight attempt by the airstream to redirect the passenger before they smack their face into the tube walls, especially if it's a sharp curve. While doing some light research, I saw in another video that someone got a camera mounted onto one of the capsules that runs through a tube network, and it was pretty evident that at the bends in the tube, there was a fair bit of scuffing, and you can even hear the donk of it off the sidewalls, so I'd prefer the capsule option even if I look like a dork. And Futurama seems to agree. In the 11th season, Hermes takes a tube down to New New Orleans that operates a lot like the 19th century conceptions, just a lot nicer looking. Also, I wonder how the system would go about moving multiple people at a time. I mean, sure, the physics of pulling or pushing a group of folks through the pipe isn't much different in the grand scheme, but like, I don't think there's any physical explanation that would keep a stopping gap. Like, wouldn't people just be pulled or pushed into each other so you end up licking boot the whole ride? Similarly, like, what happens if you take a fork in the road? Like, these tubes are interconnected. They would definitely need valves and additional pumps or fans to facilitate transfer points, but that doesn't look as sleek, uh, let alone how the system would acknowledge that. Like, I think you'd need train track switches or something to get you hitched onto the right airstream. Now another point, uh, maybe a nitpick, but is thinking about how the tubes are supported. So we see a few places that they have a good frame, like this scene here probably intends to play on the crime-ridden underpass trope, but it does employ some reasonable structural supports. And in the intro, uh, I think I see a bulb here that may be intended as a flotation device like we see with traffic lights and other Futurama technology, and that's certainly a fun idea. But by and large, part of what makes the tube seem so futuristic or surreal is the lack of structural support, and maybe we could say they're built out of a super structural glass or something, but answers like that really aren't satisfying to me. Even if we take literally the many examples that look like the St. Louis Arch, my brother in Christ, the real one is just a massive structural frame, so good luck with that little tube. Something else that raises my eyebrow when thinking about how the tubes work is how many of them there are. Like, when we watch Futurama, we get some nice citywide pans, love those, but we don't see that many tubes, just a few to remind us that they exist and this is in fact the future. But if we think about how expansive the subway systems of some large cities are and how many people they transfer, I think the skies would need to be packed with these tubes in order to have a similar capacity to modern transit systems. I mean, these things aren't that much more space efficient than cars on a highway, which at least hypothetically could put more than one person in them. I mean, if the New York subway had over 3 million daily users in 2023, I can't imagine how bad the tube traffic in New New York would have to be. At least in this clip, we are shown a multi-tube track that seems to operate at a local level, though I don't see too many of those throughout the show. And just for some fun, how funny are some of these tube layouts? Like. Thanks Lady Liberty for acting as a support structure for our transit system. Can you imagine a train tunnel coming out of George Washington's mouth at Mount Rushmore? And then there's this one that spirals down for some fun reason, like a kid's slide. And I see on multiple occasions the tube tying into a high rise at like the top floor, which is peak ridiculous. Is that a private tube just for the C-suite? If it's public, are you really going to make me get out, go down an elevator to get to shops or, you know, move around on the ground level? That sequence of words I said made perfect sense. So with all this said, the tube is like a perfect synthesis of what I'm interested in when I think of videos I want to make. And that's to explore pieces of engineering used in fiction, particularly civil and structural engineering since that's what I'm trained in, and use these pieces to think about advancing the field into the future by roughly examining what it takes to adopt a change or how much of a wild fantasy an idea might still be. And in a lot of cases, the technology certainly exists or even is isn't that uncommon, but could be costly or risky to the point that no one wants to do it. Or in the case of the tube, is technically possible, but with such a limited sense that even the wackiest of billionaires decided to drop it. 
All right, well, thanks for watching. Uh, what do you think of the tube transport system? Is it as far off as I've led you to believe, or do you think there's an idea or reason I didn't explore? Uh, please leave your thoughts down in the comments. I do appreciate reading your ideas. And while you're there, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Adios.